The job of White House press secretary is typically so combative, whomever departs that role leaves a flak jacket behind for the replacement. The incoming fire was perhaps never sharper than during the height of the Monica Lewinsky scandal when then White House press secretary Mike McCurry was behind the podium. But this Easter Sunday, we're going to take a look at how McCurry has traded in the battle armor of his old job for a new role in the church. Today. It might seem like a long road from spinning the news. What do you mean by an improper relationship? I'm not going to parse the statement. You all got the statement I made earlier, and it speaks for itself. To sharing the good news. Let's open with a moment of prayer. <laughs> but Mike McCurry, White House press secretary to President Bill Clinton during the heights of the Monica Lewinsky scandal. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Says he always sought refuge from the podium in prayer. Was it part of your life when you were the press secretary for Bill Clinton during that tumultuous era, or did you compartmentalize it? You know, it's very, very interesting, totally compartmentalized. Uh, Rahm Emanuel, people would not maybe believe this, but he used to have his rabbi come in on Saturdays to read Torah together, but it was done almost furtively. You know, people were not really, we weren't openly professing about it. I don't know whether that's just a true in the Democratic White House, because maybe it's different in a Republican White House, but open professions of faith weren't very common. And, you know, part of what I'm working on now is to say, well, we should be more open about that. Say again? McCurry's new role takes him out of the briefing room and into the classroom, directing the Center for Public Theology at Wesley Seminary in Washington, D.C. So you want to train a new generation of, of religious leaders, ministers, to help them with people in their public life. We, I want them to be comfortable talking about politics. I think most pastors, most rabbis, most imams probably avoid politics because they're afraid they're gonna offend half of their congregation one way or another. But I think churches are places where there are diverse points of view and people can have much more civil conversations about the things that matter. So I would like church leaders to be equipped to guide those conversations, not to impose points of view or theological doctrine, but to really draw out people who will maybe converse with their better angel in them. Do you think that you did anything when you were in that job that was contrary to your beliefs? Is this penance yeah. in a way? Yeah, 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 yeah. atonement. Um, I do. I mean, I, I, famously, there was one time when I kind of accused Newt Gingrich for something he had said about Social Security of probably wanting to see old people shrivel up and die. So the reason they're trying to slow the rate of increase in the program, I, I suppose, is because eventually they'd like to see the program and just die and go away. You know, that's probably what they'd like to see happen to sen seniors, too. It was bad enough that Gingrich called President Clinton and said that he wanted me fired that day. I patched things up with Newt Gingrich, but I came pretty close to creating exactly the thing that I think is wrong and broken about politics now. So I do think that there's some penance involved in seeing if you can try to make things better. What do we need to do to make it better? Because it sure seems uglier than it's been in a long, long time. Well, that, that's a hard question. And, you know, far be it for me to say, how do you structure things? But finding those gentle voices that know how to disagree and make points that don't inflame passions. And that's not easy to do because, you know, sometimes the most newsworthy, the most uh, exciting people are the people who are going to exacerbate some of those differences. And I think that's exactly why I would like to see church leaders and people of faith calling on the political world to lift the debate a little higher.